हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज योर होस्ट ज्योत्सना शर्मा वेलकमिंग यू बैक टू अनदर सीरीज ऑफ वॉइस ऑफ लीगल इमिग्रेंट्स ऑन टीवी फाइव मना टीवी एंड मना टीवी इंटरनेशनल एज प्रॉमिस टू यू आई ट्राई टू ब्रिंग मीनिंगफुल डिस्कशंस डिस्कशन दैट रिलेट्स टू द सक्सेस ऑफ द लीगल हाई स्किल इमिग्रेंट्स इन द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका दैट रिलेट्स टू द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द वीजा होल्डर्स इन दिस कंट्री एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अ वेरी स्पेशल टॉपिक स्पेशल टॉपिक विच इज इन कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी that relates to the millions of lives yes this is about the bill s386 and we are going to talk about the future of s386 today to discuss on the same i have a very special guest with me a guest who is an attorney by profession and she has been doing a lot of good work for the legal immigrants her name is nandini nayar and she is a partner in green spoon murders immigration and naturalization practice group and a member of the firm's management committee her enthusiasm for immigration law directly stems from her background having emigrated from india to the united states throughout her almost two decades in the field she has helped hundreds of immigrant have hundreds of people immigrate to the united states of achieve their american dream she has counseled clients through the global financial crisis and the ever changing immigration rules and policies she has made extraordinary efforts on the behalf of her clients engaging members of the congress to assist in a resolution of a case communicating with us consulate officers and the department of the state and relevant decision makers at the united St states department of labor and department of homeland security ms nayar has written a number of articles on immigration and has lectured nationally on immigration issues to bar associations and industry groups and has made previous tv appearances her passion for the american dream has led her to a new but personal journey engaging south asians on the topic of diversity and inclusion she believes in the transformative power of diversity and inclusion by acting actively engaging different perspectives including from immigrants and the south asian community ms nayar was recently appointed president of the new jersey advisory board of the tri state diversity council and speaks at various events highlighting diversity and inclusion she recently spoke in dallas texas at the national diversity council annual conference that included speakers such as president obama colin powell america ferrera in june 19 2019 she was recognized by the national law journal and the new jersey law journal as a 2019 immigration trailblazer a person solely dedicated for the good of the legal immigrants there she is nandini nayar who would be discussing on the topic future of s386 and without much ado let me introduce her right here nandini welcome to the show thank you so much i'm so happy to be here to be with you and to discuss this important topic in immigration thank you so much for coming uh, to our show you know spending your valuable time <laughs> being a sunday today i understand no this is important this is very important so we need to discuss it absolutely i'm um, in fact your profile is very impressive nandini oh <laughs> and <laughs> uh, you. yeah you spoke about diversity and inclusion yes. you spoke about ela you know you are a member of ela yes i am Even before I start, I just want a little clarification from you because yes. there are reservations from the community when mm -hmm. we speak about ELA. Of course, uh, recently with the S three eighty six being proposed, yes. you know, for the unanimous consent, what yes. has happened is uh, we heard that there were members of ELA who were against the mm -hmm. passage of S three eighty six, and they were re trying to reach out to senators to not support the S three eighty six. I would like to hear from you. You are also part of ELA. Yes. What is your take on this bill? First of all. Okay. So let me be very clear about that. ELA as an organization has over 25,000 members. They have taken no stand on this bill. They are not saying yes or no on the bill because there's so many members. Um yes, you are absolutely correct. There are many members of the organization who are against this bill. However, I am not one of those members. I am absolutely for this bill. I represent the population that is affected by this bill and I understand the importance of it to them. I don't um I I listen to the other side and I just cannot reconcile what they have to say mm -hmm. to what I know the hurt of the people that I represent, which are mainly Indians right. and their weight and their pain and 
the pain to the entire family. It's not just the kids and the wife. Absolutely. It's also to the extended family who's waiting for some resolution for these people. Very true. That life uh, being p on a pause, uh, it, it really is incredibly difficult for them. So I am not uh, with those members who stand to go against this bill, but I am a proud ALA member and I'm glad that ALA is not taking a position because you don't want them to take a position in a way. Because Indeed. if they said against that bill, they have a large advocacy part of them that could really torpedo this bill. And so I rather them just stand back and don't say I mean, anything. Don't say anything is better than, you know, they lobby yes. against us. Yes. Because they have money, they have yes, power, they, they do. have authority. Yes, and they we do. can definitely be in trouble. Yes, they can. Yes. I mean, we, as I say, it's the legal immigrant, high skill legal yes. immigrants community. Agreed. I am part of that and I've been very active with the advocacy that we do. The whole purpose of this show, Voice mm -hmm. of Legal Immigrant, also is the same. Yes. To get the problem solved, right. to educate and enlighten the masses mm -hmm. who are stuck in this limbo of green cards not coming. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you know, their H 1B is being. Uh, Denied. denied, yes. Their amendments being denied yes. and the tension and the fear that yes. they will stay in yes. is, is horrible. Yes, it is. I, I agree 100% with everything you're saying. I I find value in immigrants. You know, as you under, you were talking about my second passion, which right. is diversity, right. which includes the immigrant journey, which is nobody understands that life. Uh, in fact, I had, I, I was, you know, of course, I, I read a very impressive profile of yours. Yeah. And when you speak about diversity and inclusions, where do you project Indians? You, because you're doing this advocacy, mm -hmm. I mean, you are part of the mm -hmm. diversity and inclusion, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, council. Yep. Council. Yes. Yeah. So, how are you successfully able to integrate Indians into that? It's, it's extremely difficult. That's my number one agenda. It's my number one agenda. When I took up the presidency, I was nominated um, and appointed in um, uh, 2019. One of my biggest goals, biggest goals, is to bring the Asians and the immigrant perspective to this conversation. Because I can tell you, when I go to an event, I am very, I don't see me ever I there. Understand. And nobody understands the, the trauma of their life, their burdens, their um, their joys, their hardships. Nobody understands that, you know, and that's my job. Right. So I am absolutely for the immigrant and I am doing everything in my power to highlight and showcase who they are. Thank you so much. In fact, uh, because your profile as an attorney is one, and but then when you speak about diversity and inclusion, it definitely, you know, created curiosity in me yeah. where on what platform we can have success, you know, Absolutely. for our community, because that's where you can project us as well and mm -hmm. speak about our rights. Uh, S386, um, as I said, I am definitely for that bill. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, there's a lot of controversy about this bill because I think people who the people who are against the bill think that you know Indians are going to get their green cards immediately. Right. It actually is not true. Absolutely. There is going to be a transition period. There is going to be a wait time. Does it cut the wait time in half? Absolutely. But it only cuts it in half. It's not that in 2021. Yeah, I mean, there are 300,000 primary applicants. And there's actually over 500,000 Indians in the backlog. Yeah, including their families. Yes, yes including their families. There's 586 in totality. Out of that, it's 534 are Indians, which also includes their dependents. The thing is, uh, regarding this S386, yes. you know, the thing is, first, this bill was objected by Senator Rand Paul. Yes. Then David Purdue, Purdue objected yes. to it. And Mike Lee, Senator Mike Lee has been playing a very important yes. role he negotiating asked. and is very yes. successful yes. in getting the objections removed mm -hmm. by both these senators. And now the ball is, you know, the, 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 the ground is held back by Senator Dick Durbin, right. uh, the senator from Illinois. Right. Right. And uh, again, I don't know. What do you foresee, number one? Of course, I'll take a personal view from you, a viewpoint from you right now. Mm -hmm. um, I, so I was looking into the background of why Dick Durbin actually was objecting to it. And I, I've seen the video. I know some of the things that happened, um, which I, I also don't personally appreciate how he handled the town hall. 
um, uh, and think yes and that that was uh, yeah that was I'll speak about it later yeah that was not good um, but you know what I understand in the background is there is large lobbying groups that are against this bill and so what they did is so actually who are these lobbying groups the United Congress? Tech Workers United Tech Workers United Tech Workers is the number one lobbying group who is against this pro, um, this bill mm -hmm. what they feel is who that are these people what these are, they are tech work US Turk Tech oh, workers, you okay. are okay. U.S. tech workers, right? They feel that the Indians are taking um, their jobs. That's mm -hmm. really what that is about. So, um, and they have actually done a lot of lobbying and calling the offices. So, right before the vote was actually taken, I believe that they reached out to Dick Durbin's office and just pounded his phones, mm -hmm. and that's why he ended I mean, up I doing that. I see the immigrant Indian community also is. No, we're making a lot of phone sure, calls of and reaching out to the senator's yeah, of office. Course. But of course, I mean, it, it is one part. And I also heard the Iranian workers. Yes, and the, they're uh, against Filipinos that too. Also yes. Are against yes. this bill. They're lobbying. Yeah. The Filipinos are against it. I mean, it might slow down because of the Rand mm -hmm. Paul Amendment, because the Rand Paul Amendment it, uh, adds 5,000 these um, green cards for nurses, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, he was a physician. Absolutely. He right? Is, he right? Is, so he uh, he's very particular towards health care and towards the nurses. Right. So, and in his background, I think he sees that the Philippines were a major player in health care. And right. if this bill went through without his amendment, mm -hmm. they would be shut out of the green card process. Right. Right? I mean, that has been already negotiated right. and taken and care so of. Um, I think now that we have some room there, maybe there will be some sort of leeway of them not being so objected to this and about bill. Iranians, what do you feel? It's again, the Iranians are the same as the Europeans and every other rest of the world nationalities. They feel that the wait of seven or maybe it might even be four years is too much. Mm -hmm. It's just too much and for them. And what about the Indians? Yeah, who are waiting people, 50 years. Waiting forever. Yes, I mean, the, range, the, the wait range goes from anything between 15 years to 150 years. Yes. I mean, a reincarnation also wouldn't ensure a green card <laughs> for sure. Yes. And what if a person becomes an earthworm? Yeah, no. I I I am there with it's you. It's ridiculous. Light light, but it it's, is so bad. It is it is incredibly bad. The latest report says forty nine years Thank for you. Indian nationals. Let's educate the masses about Okay. Let's you know, the bill being formed. Mm -hmm. Let's let's trace it back how it okay. started off. How a, a bill becomes a law. Becomes, <laughs> like a bill becomes a law. How much okay. of time it is consumed. Yes. If things go right. Oh. And if they are not going right right now, as you know, right. how miserable it is. Okay. So let's talk about just the basics. This is just basic civics. Absolutely. Okay. A bill gets introduced um, by a senator or a House of Representatives, so congressman. Um, normally, a bill is never introduced by a solo individual. It's usually, they have ne some negotiations. For example, S386 is with Mike Lee and Kamala Harris, and there's actually 34 co-sponsors here. Absolutely. So that's excellent. Once the bill is introduced, then it goes to committee, okay? What committee are we dealing with? We are dealing with the Judiciary Committee, so right? It's a now, Senate, Senate Judiciary Committee. Senate Judiciary Committee. Now, but the House can introduce a bill. A Senate can also introduce so a bill. So it can be simultaneous, it simultaneously can be. be introduced. Yes, it can so be. So it is not like that, that the House has to introduce a bill first and then the Senate. No, it doesn't. But they both have to pass the bill. Absolutely. together Absolutely. right and the same version of the bill so okay, once it so goes to committee the, that committee's whole job and there may be subcommittees the whole job is to do research to do impact analysis to do risk to do all of those things and come up with the framework of what the bill is supposed to be there's debate hopefully there is no debate if you get unanimous consent so uh, here's the situation which is exclusively different yes this is only going through the unanimous consent that's now right in the senate right right now. i have a call here yeah. right now so hello hello hi may i know your name please hi my name is vinay i'm calling from missouri uh can you please repeat i lost the audio here uh, what's your name yeah my name is vinay okay what's your question so my question is like you know what will be the chances of passing S three eighty six since it was blocked by Senator Durbin? Okay, so Nandini, the question remains the same. He says, what are the chances of the bill getting passed? Um, you know, by Senator Dick Durbin is right now blocking it. So what are the chances for its success um, right now? I, I think it's a great thing that there's only one ob objection right now. And I think it's something that's manageable. I think what Dick Durbin wants is to increase the green card amount. 
that's what he said. That's one of his reasons he doesn't feel like, he feels that the reason that he's objecting to this uh, bill is not because he doesn't want to give the green cards out or change the policies. He feels that it's going to do harm for the rest of the world. So I think that's a place that you can actually negotiate from and you can explain to him that this is not some sort of you know short-term fix it actually is going to take a number of years for this backlog to be created um, or to be eliminated I should say so that you know and from there le let's look to the next step I believe in incremental change I don't know that we can do sweeping, massive change out there, Vinay. So I feel there might be some positivity if there's only one objection out there. However, <laughs> I'm going to say I do get concerned when somebody's out there like that and if hopefully Dick Durbin is not, you know, talking too much to other senators and changing their minds. But for right now, I always try to say positive. You know, I'm a person of... Glass half so the ball, thing is, see, honestly, know? what I've, I'm seeing, witnessing is two senators objected. The third one is yes. determined right now. Yes. And then what if another senator jumps in and says, nope, now it's my time to object? I, I think Mike Lee has a good job of vetting this very carefully from what I'm understanding in the background that he, senators are, do not want to make fools out of themselves, okay? They're going to have definitely talked to other people and they're going to have to the other senators and taken the t their temperature, mm -hmm. right? What do you think? If they felt they were really objections out there, I don't think he would have gotten this far. So that to me gives, is a positive because, sign. Uh, see, the thing is, I'll tell you, uh, this another advocacy group that was speaking about yes. the unanimous yes. consent being yeah. introduced. I mean, of course, they were lobbying, and yes. then, of course, Senator Mike Lee and yes. Kamala Harris were there, part of it, and, you know, uh, unanimous consent, uh, you know, method was chosen. Right. And, uh, as you said, they, they were trying to foresee, okay, we will not have much objection, but right. still the objections are coming in. We also have a question for to those immigration uh, advocacy groups as well. If you were foreseeing certain roadblocks ahead, why was it not sent to a normal Judiciary Committee review route mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, uh, man, it was like Senate Majority uh, Leader uh, Ishmael Connell mm -hmm. would have introduced it on the floor right. and would have taken that route. Right. Now, the thing is, see, the thing is, okay, you are still hopeful. We are still hopeful, of course, if right. Senator Durbin removes the, uh, you know, the problem, uh, the objection, uh, it, it gets passed. Mm -hmm. But God forbid, it, if it doesn't happen, right. what are we seeing next? What's going to happen? What's going to happen is that you have to go back to the drawing board. That's really what's going to happen. What happens is that we're going to have to send it back to the Judiciary Committee, mm -hmm. and we have to find out, Joseph, what is the real objection here? Mm -hmm. And we have to go back and read and say, okay, if Dick Durbin's objection is that he does not want to do harm to the rest of the world, then how about increasing the green card numbers? Can we rewrite this law, keep some of this stuff that's in there, mm -hmm. and rewrite it to ex you know, maybe bring in parts of the Believe Act by Rand Paul? You know, maybe something like that, which does increase it to uh, green visa cards, numbers, visas, right. yeah. green cards. Um, can we maybe incorporate some of that to make a better version that does not supposedly do harm to other um, countries out there, you know? But again, I, I think that when I've been doing this for 20 years, I've seen bills come and go, mm -hmm. and I've never seen a bill get this far. I've never seen a bill get this far immigration yet. Bill immigration bill get this far into 20 years I've done it. So that is where I have more hope than I might have had five years ago, four years ago, mm -hmm. that, okay, we only have one senator objecting, and he's not objecting because he wants to say something like, I hate all immigrants or no, any no, of no, those. No, he's not saying not. nothing, anything like that. Right. He's just saying, can we get something better than this? That's okay. I mean, you know? See, our point here is unanimous consent was the best possible way to get the work done, the fastest possible yes, way. Yes, agree. Because there would be objections, there would be amendments and amendments and more amendments by yes. each and every senator when we go for the voting route right. through the Senate Judiciary Committee right. and when it comes to the floor right. on the Senate. But with the UC in the picture and Senator Durbin being there, now if the immigrant community was to take certain steps how do we enumerate and I, I have some logistic questions you know I mean is it advisable that 
people can do, I mean, of course, I was hearing about there is a march for equality being planned in Illinois mm -hmm. uh, 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 in a few days where they speak, there's going, people are, uh, these high skill immigrants would be walking up to Senator Durbin's office and would be, you know, uh, you know, presenting a case where they are saying we all are equals on the basis of the work we do mm -hmm. on the high skill right. you know level of work that we are doing right. then why is there a discrimination on the level of per country because here every country is assigned 7% with uh, green card numbers yes. and now the problem is India and China and various other countries which have higher population mm -hmm. majorly these two countries of course are facing the problem because they produce a lot of engineers and doctors and right. researchers and scientists right. Who come to this country? Yes. Who are giving, adding value to the country? Yes. Who are strengthening the economy yes. and those socio-economic dynamics here? Yes. They are innovating. They are contributing. Mm -hmm. They call this country their home. Now, what's happening is there is a bias. Why are Indians being seen as a poison? When people are objecting, these people lobbying, right. for lobbying firms who are Iranians and whatever people who are mm -hmm. against S386 and they're saying, oh, we would see Indians, the outpour of Indians here, and we'll see Indians and. Come on, people, we're already there. We're sitting here <laughs> right in front of you. Why are you not seeing us? Yeah. It's about the green card. Well, I don't have to act exactly or exclaim like this, but the problem is you have the USCIS, the Department of Labor has approved their green cards. It is just that they're not getting their green card. We are approved by DOL where it was stated that you are eligible to get this green card and you are not displacing any American worker in this country. And that is how we were approved for the green card. But since we have this 7% allocation of the green card numbers, actual numbers that come every year, we are getting into a line, a backlog after year after year. And we are standing in a line where we are to given a token and we are told when your number comes, go get your gift of green card. That's not really good. We are just saying we came here first. We give us give us the green card. Give us the green card on the order of the first come first serve basis. Why is there a discrimination on that? So there is a march. People are planning. What they are saying is march for equality, mm -hmm. and they want to reach out to Senator Durbin and right. speak about that. And it's it's something like there are already 586,000 mm -hmm. Indians here. If it is more about Indians in this country already. Funding, they, I mean, of course, paying taxes, yes. uh, engaging in the economy. They are investing into the, uh, you know, houses, the mm -hmm. other infrastructure. They are sending their kids to schools, elite colleges here, and not just that, they are the value adders here. So, well, my point is, when they do this march for equality or yeah. any such thing, is it against the normal uh, democratic structure? No. Are they free to do? Because you know this legal immigrants, yeah, they're on visa and they're always scared. What yeah. if I am seen by the media? Yeah. What if people see me? Yeah. I would, my right. job would be in trouble or my right. visa would be in trouble. Right. I would be monitored by somebody and I really cannot go into the advocacy efforts. Right. I would jeopardize my future here and right. the visa and the green card. No. I want a clarity from an immigration lawyer here. No, there's can no. Can they openly speak? They can openly speak. They can openly speak. What can they cannot do is they cannot riot. They cannot break the law. If you want to develop a day that and, and say this is the day we're going to march for certain rights or certain and highlight what your point of view is, mm -hmm. there's absolutely nothing wrong with anybody going and do that. Actually, it has to be just done by the law. That is all that is necessary. This is a democratic country, mm -hmm. and they we were built on this. Okay, so there's nothing wrong for you marching with you calling your senator, you making an appointment. Can you go barge into Durbin's office and like pound on his doors no, and no, break no. furniture? No, none of those type of things can happen. But can you peacefully and respectfully, respectfully you yes. know, point out what's going on, what your perspective is? Absolutely. I, I empower you to go do that. Will it have an effect on your immigration status? No, as long as you don't break the law. That's all that it is. Absolutely. So all the best to all the people who are planning to go for March for Equality in Illinois, you know, reaching out to Senator Dur Durbin's office. And rather, you know, they're supposed to educate the senator about their troubles in yes. a very sublime and yes. humble and modest manner. No offensive. We are educated. We are law-abiding. We must always remember that. 
adding to it, uh, Nandini. Yes. I am a very vocal person <laughs> and do advocacy for the yes. green card yes, backlog. I've been doing it for years yes. now and have been uh, you know involved with multiple uh, non-profit organizations, mm -hmm. you know, been member of social on the social platform. Yes. I've been member there. I mean right. I'm speaking from you know charity begins at home I'm saying that from this end. Uh, definitely my proposal along with other people from mm -hmm. these different groups mm -hmm. is to observe uh, green card backlog. I mean say green card Equality Day. Yeah. Green Card Equality Day. I'm, 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 uh, you know, uh, phrasing this term mm -hmm. because I think I think it's a fair statement. Like uh, the way you're phrasing it, I, I think that highlights what the fight is all actually about. And so, so you find it illegitimate, so legitimate in those terms. Like I, I do. We observe a Green Card Equality Day. The date set is during the week of the Thanksgiving. This Green Card Equality Day is all about stepping out from your office space between 12 p.m. to 12.30 p.m. Eastern, Central and PST times respectively without affecting your work but still showing the you know solidarity about sending the right message. This is a GC Equality Day. We are observing this day to convey the message to all the, all the decision makers, the lawmakers, mm -hmm. and the American public, what is our irony, what we are facing. On a social media, definitely it will go, it will become public. When people, I think we educate them, then only we are able to mobilize. Absolutely. Because if American citizens understand what is the relevance of these Indian right. workers contributing to the economy, mm -hmm. they wouldn't go against them. Mm -hmm. And we seek support from uh, American citizens as well. Right. So is it legitimate to observe such a day? I think it's fine. I, I, and, I mean, and do did you we feel just not that people's jobs would be jeopardized if they are stepping out in their cafeteria or in the open grounds and speaking no, about green I, card I, equality I, and just showing a picture and selfie? No, I don't actually. Why? Because didn't we just have the major walkout for climate change just two weeks ago? Where what happened exactly? All climate over the country. Walkout? Climate change walkout. What happened is that throughout the whole world, mm -hmm. actually the whole, whole world, world. Okay. people walked out from their jobs. They had a parade. They, you know, they were had signs. They were talking about the impact of climate change mm -hmm. why can't this be something like that and uh, again it's about doing something that's law abiding and in this country this country of all countries you are more than allowed to come out and voice your opinions you know okay. as long as you don't break the law and you and there's it isn't breaking the law no, you know just you, the you're, com you're going out now do I say that all employers are going to be happy with you doing that and that might be an issue? But that's a different qu question. I mean, we are you know? just trying to convey the message. We don't yes, want to um, of uh, you know, offend our employer or client yes. at the same time. But there is a human problem. Yes. The problem relates to 586 plus thousand right. human beings whose dreams, future, and everything is at stake right now. The sorry state is people are here in this country for last 15 to 20 years on a H-1B. Year after year, they are getting their extensions or amendments mm -hmm. or whatever or <laughs> transfers and everything. Yes. Now the story is suddenly everything in the administration has become stringent. Yes. More than 100,000 H-1B people were sent back last year yes. in this whole clearing press process, cleaning yes. up the mess process probably. and. What happened to those 100,000 families was they had to wind up everything on a two weeks notice. They had to sell their homes, cars, property and everything, whatever. And they had to pull out their kids who were either elementary schools, middle schoolers or high schoolers from their education. Mm -hmm. And they had to immediately move out to India or any other country. Mm -hmm. Displacing people on a sudden note is absolutely suicidal. Yeah. What is killed? the dreams, the aspirations, the the motivation mm -hmm. to do some good work right. is all killed. It's not about people dying per se, but there is a death of dreams. There is a death of a hope, a hope that they had for last 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. The hope where they invested the prime of their youth, their future, their career here in this country to make America much better and greater and call this country a home. Their kids know only United States of America as their home. They don't even relate much to India or their motherland now because they were socialized into the American structure. The education was all American. They are more like American citizens in right. making. 
and now there is a brain drain happening. Yes, but this here's the other part of it that's a little also unfair to me. Mm -hmm. You know, they pay into Social Security and they will never receive Social Security benefits. Absolutely. Benefit. And uh, to Millions me, of dollars they, there it's amazing Security. that they can actually have qualified, because they will have been here 10 years working, right? right? I have clients who are here 10 years waiting for this green card, and God forbid something happens and they have to leave this country. They pay 10 years into the Social Security and they are never going to see this. Absolutely not. And versus if they had maybe stayed in India, they might have a pension and whatever. And it, that, that amount of time that they put towards their career and their work and things that were taken, they would see that benefit back. But working here, they might not. They may not because they may not get that extension. Absolutely not. They, Absolutely you know? Not. So, so that Nani, bothers I me a lot. I have one more question. Recently, you know, the a huge Howdy Modi event happened. Yes. Now, what happened was 50,000 Indians mm -hmm. were there. President Trump also came. Yes. Well received. Great consensus on a lot of things. But nobody spoke about immigration. The issue which is eating away the lives of these mm -hmm. immigrant workers, which are 586,000. Right according to you and yes. 700,000 plus according to me the number is nobody spoke can it be possible that the Indian government the Prime Minister of India is reached out mm -hmm. Prime Minister Modi they reach out I mean as the Iranian government is doing they right. are lobbying now right yes can it be possible that we reach out to the Prime Minister of India or their office external affairs mm -hmm. ministry and reach out and put our uh, request to them also to speak about can you please speak about us about this backlog and get it solved is it possible or not hundred percent but why do you, do you know that there's a visa called the E3 for Australians? No, what Where, is it? It's, a, it's like the H-1B visa for Australians, okay. only for Australians, called All the right. E3 visa. Uh -huh. How do you think that happened? I don't do you know. think that the government of the United States said, let me just carve out this specific visa for Australians? Of course not. There was intense lobbying and background negotiations that was going on saying, hey, let me carve this out. We have E2 visas for Israelis. Why? Because there was background lobbying and negotiations. So absolutely, do I think the Modi government can advocate, lobby, and work with the Un United States to create some sort of resolution, some sort of relief? Mm -hmm. Yes. Maybe it's not the full relief that we're seeking, but mm -hmm. can something be better than today? That's can what I ask. Can the at least go through Modi government's yes. office? But that yes, of, the of course. Okay. Of course. So here's I, the thing to my viewers, basically. You definitely can reach out to the Indian government as well yes. and request them about this, that we are in pain, and educate the external affairs minister there. And not just that, seek out help by writing letters to the Indian government as well. Of course, no government can intervene with the internal matters, right. uh, matters of the other uh, government. But at least at a higher level, message can be sent. Try out that route as well. Nobody has seen that route till date. I don't know why, but there is no harm when we know we are at the bright end, we are, we are at the you know, last fag end of seeing success. Try your might out wherever, whatever you can do it from, whether it is American media, which is again missing out in action right now, Nandini. Why do you, I would like to know from you, why is American media also not taking part into this? Now they don't cover our topics pretty well. They, they, we they don't. They don't. They don't. You know, the topic is always the southern border, right? The yeah. undocumented, the DACA. Uh -huh. um, they don't put an emphasis on legal immigration. And, right. and that's frustrating. But it's also the fact that we don't have problems, that they don't need resolution. They don't need forward movement on their status. It mm -hmm. seems to be concentrated very much on the undocumented workers. And I'm not saying that they don't deserve some sort of, you know, you know, advocacy of, okay, but why are we not in that conversation? We need to also be part of that discussion. You know, we are coming in the legal way, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I mean, I don't know why uh, why there is a change picture with uh, Indians are being seen on a different level right now. Whoa, too many Indians. We're already here. Since 2017, I have seen a dramatic change in how Indians and people of brown color are viewed in this country. And I, I think there is a correlation, which I'm not going to go into, but I, I think there's been a change. I grew up in this country, you know, I came, I'm an immigrant, but I grew up here. And I can tell you um, from when I was 20 years ago to what I see today, this is not the country I remember. 
Okay. Okay. There's another call from Oklahoma right now. Hello. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Hi. Uh, my name is Arun Rao. Yeah, Arun. Hi. How are you? Tell me. Yeah. So, yeah, I, ha I have a question to respond to me. Yes. Ask your question. Yeah, so, yeah, the, my question is a bit uh, different than 386. Uh, it goes back to the green card issue itself. Okay. Knowing that the lead times are more than 100 years, isn't it uh, a scam or illegal from the government authorities to even accept green card applications from Indians, knowing that they would not get the green card in their lifetime? Okay, so, so here's the rephrase question. You are saying, is it not a scam by the U.S. government accepting the green card yes. application from Indian immigrants when they know nothing is going to happen for their green cards for next 150 years? Yes. Okay, Nandini, it's a very <laughs> tough question, putting you in a tough uh, spot. Um, but yes. Thanks for the question. Well, Arun, thank you for the question. Okay. Um, no, I don't think it's a scam. I, I think the laws were written um, regardless of what your country was. They didn't design the law for Indians. They didn't design the law for Europeans or Iranians or anyone. They created a objective law and to allow people to immigrate to the United States based on employment. The problem really stems from the last part of it, which is the 485 application. And so, which is, you know, to give uh, only 7% to a specific country. That's what S386 changes, and that's what we need to fight for. Thank you so much, Arun. Uh, thanks for the question. I will, of course, get, I'm getting another calls as well, so I'll disconnect right now. Okay. So, Nandini, mm -hmm. you know, I have to help the community because there was some glitch. Of course, I have to help them out. If yes. I get another call, I'll pick it. Absolutely. Yes. Regarding the next steps about, uh, you know, if, God forbid, there is another objection on this unanimous consent. Yes. Thankfully, first of all, maybe if uh, Senator Durbin removes his block. Yes. Okay. And now it goes further and mm -hmm. we get another block yeah another senator yes how much time more time are we it, killing it, it's going to get killed uh, I, I that's what i believe that if anybody mm -hmm. else keeps objecting it's mm -hmm. going to just go on and on and it's going to get to a place of where mm -hmm. it's this is not going to go forward then that's why um mm -hmm. i believe that you, we have to uh, talk to dick durbin we have to find out what's going on what how can we resolve what is going on in his mind because we right now only have one I, mm -hmm. I, we are so far. No, we are actually, we, we, people have become so negative right now. And yes. they feel, okay, somebody else will also block. How much time but will be eaten away and what is the way There is no that? time limit on this, right? There's a, so here's the no, thing. But then, but then there's this, an October this, recess this, this, coming this up. This is the year ending right the, now. What happens? No, the year has ended already. The year ended. Oh. Year ended 9 30, 2008. Thing, yeah. Time is running out. Time how long can this uh, bill stand? Time. No, bill can be there for ever if you want no, will it. it not die it will die because when? the prop it can die anytime it can die tomorrow just now no no no, no. i mean to say uh, one uc objection comes another comes yeah it keeps moving on senator lee is putting his best effort right. many thanks it, to it's him. up to but the but would, it, would it live or they'll say okay there's a stipulated it depends time. on senator Line, lee by december it'll kill it'll be killed no it Nothing depends like on senator lee how much far he wants to push so remember the government works on a fiscal year of october one mm -hmm. That's the so Senate. We're already in it, right? We now. are already in it. Okay. So it's not going to happen for fiscal year 2020, which is what the government's fiscal year is right mm -hmm. now. Okay? It is going to, if this works, it will go into the next fiscal year, which is 2021. And so it will just get pushed forward, the three year transition so say period. Supposedly, UC is not working out. Is it yes. Worst case picture. Can it not happen that our people um, you know, get into the efforts? Uh, bringing this bill, um, I mean, Senator Mike Lee yes. should send it to the Senate Judiciary Committee yes. and send it to the floor vote. Is it is it possible to parallelly it is. do? It, it's not par possible to do um, parallelly. You have to do it separately. I if don't you don't get the unanimous consent, no, 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 then no. you have to send it to back to the judiciary okay. and then it goes back to the so floor vote. So you are saying while we are alre already held back in the unanimous yes. uh, consent uh, yes. route right yeah. now, we just cannot take it to a house, uh, no, Senate Judiciary No, committee. otherwise it would have already gone back right now, right? I so agree. I mean, we, we, we are trying to find out a way, can it parallelly do when we do. I, I mean, I, so I, I really we are speaking about, we are speaking about the bill, you see objecting. Of course, there is one way we can see a sunshine, a bright sunshine very soon if Senator Durbin removes his yes. block and the bill gets passed and then of course it will go to the House 
for reconsideration again with all the amended versions that we have. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it goes to the President of the United States to get it signed. Very bright, very positive, very rosy picture. Of course, we are trying to see that. We believe in seeing positive, yes. things happening in positive. But if it doesn't happen, we are killing our time with the UC for the time being. And then this bill again goes out for the Senate Judiciary Committee's approval. Then Mitch McConnell putting it on the floor for vote. Uh, you don't and then want again, it. we do lobbying. So are we doing this lobbying for years then? It might be. Yes, it takes time for a law to become. <laughs> I know I don't. I know you don't want to hear I'm this, getting, but it I'm takes. I'm getting restless with, of course, that. It, yes. The thing is, if it was simple like this, mm -hmm. then we would have already had immigration reform. Right? If we have not had comprehensive immigration reform for 20 years. Mm -hmm. If we could move this bill along that fast, then we would have had all of these things already resolved. But it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. And the problem is there's a lot of politics behind it. There's a lot of lobbying behind this that are advocating against this okay, bill. Okay, I'm getting a call, uh, yep. Nandini. I'll just yep. pick it right now. Hi, how are you? Hi, uh, I'm Good. Prashant here. Hi, are you guys able to hear me? Yes, yes. Please ask your question. Yeah, my question uh, is more over like, you know, uh, when and how is the best way, you know, to look after the legal immigrants who are in a wait line, you know, for more than 10 years. So is that something, you know, uh, our lawyer Naya can help us answer? She would. <laughs> Anandini, please help out on that, of course. And I first first question from my end also I added on to be how do we keep safeguarding our H one B staff for the time being till yeah. the time this never ending wait is there? Yes, that that's thanks, Prashant, for your question. Yeah. So is his question how we can help him, or is his question if no, while we wait in this green card backlog, we are here for more than 10, 10 years, yes. decades, as we see how we safeguard everything and still be in the fight. That's his question basically. How how are we going to stay calm? What do you see safeguarding our career here? Um, you know? Uh, yeah, I definitely think that it's important that you maintain, obviously, your H-1 status if you're on an H or an L or whatever status you're mm -hmm. on, but mainly H's. Uh, how do you safeguard it? By filing good petitions, by not filing, you know, ha making sure that you, your employer, are doing um, good petitions in the sense of that they are having the documents you need for the um, uh, H-1B petitions, you, making sure that you use a good lawyer. <laughs> I have to say this, you know. No, no, I, uh, I, I know course, the business very well. I, I deal with mainly IT staffing companies, and I understand where, you know, cost uh, is more important than um, good work. And I can honestly tell you to the people who watch who are on the H-1Bs, Today is not the day to play that game. Today is the day to have an advocate by your side. And that is an immigration advocate, somebody who knows their business, who's been doing this a long time, mm -hmm. who's done hundreds of cases. Absolutely. Who else better than you? You know, yeah, well, I mean, I'm just saying generally, years, you know, it's off, important. Right? And I, it's a difficult place. Like, I, I completely sympathize with my clients. And not the ne not I'm saying the employers who are actually my clients, but also these H-1B people. Do you not have wives call me? And they will be like, Nandini, oh, oh my no, God. I have a very specific you know, question to these yeah. H-4 uh, visa holders. You know, some, some of, of course, most of the uh, H-4 EAD holders yes. now are in a big problem right now. The problem yeah. is, while their husbands, uh, you know, their spouses, I mean, not husband and wife, yeah. but whosoever is right. in H-4, right. while their spouses apply for the extension for right. H-1, right. it goes in the premium and it appro gets approved right. also faster. Correct. But what happens with this uh, fingerprinting coming right. into the picture? The biometrics. The biometrics coming right. into the picture, the H-4 petitions are getting delayed. They yes. are not part of the premium Correct. process. Correct. And now what's happening is we're taking more than six to eight months right now. Oh, correct. Now, they are not just losing on the job. Right. But also on a status where they are allowed to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, they lose it completely. If mm -hmm. they are running a business, it's it's like, I don't know what's going to happen for the business in between. They cannot I, uh, receive funds. Right. They cannot receive a salary right. when they do not have a EAD status. Correct. Because they come on an H-4 note then, simple, right. and then that's not legally allowed. Right. Is the rule going to break? I mean, no. I mean, how how would the administration view it in the wake of the situation where H H four EAD extension is gone? Mm -hmm. You know, By and of course, I don't know what date it becomes effective from. Right. It, it does it become effective from the date of application or date of approval? 
Okay, so we don't know how they're going to rescind the program. So what the latest update on the H-4 EAD for people who are interested is that in spring 2020, they are going to issue the final route eliminate, uh, eliminating well, that, this program. That's question about you, elimination. What I'm saying is people who are applying also. Right, they, I'm, right. I'm having one yep. more question from Michigan yep. right now. Hi, may I know your name, please? Hi, my name is Jace Matthews. I'm from Michigan. Hi, Jace. Please put your question. Um... It's about uh, this S 386 Is there anything we can do about moving it further forward? We've been trying to call that uh, senator 15 times other days, and we try several times. Is there anything we can do? Um, thank you so much, Jace. Thank you so much, and I appreciate that question a lot. Um, I think the best thing is you have to have your voices heard. Okay, mm -hmm. one of the things with um, Indian immigrants that I'm always fighting for is show your strength show your lobbying power, show your perspective. So call the offices, make appointments actually, if you can go down to DC or even their home offices and talk to them in person about what is going on. Be informative, don't just come there with anger in your voice. Absolutely. Have statistics, have information, and have a conversation with these senators and these congressmen, because sometimes that does change that. And then media 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 um, in this country and especially today with social media that is an important part of advocacy so if you are on social media and this is something that's important to you I encourage you to you know push some of these things out onto your Facebook to your Instagram to your Twitter um, you know if you follow me on Twitter you're gonna see me retweeting putting s different articles on if you follow jokes now you're gonna see all of these type of things so Netra, that's important. Uh, sorry, sorry uh, yeah. uh, Nandini thank you so much for that. I have another caller here okay. right now. Netra, are you there? Yes. Netra. Okay, so I identified her because I'll tell you about her. She okay. is the owner of, she is the admin to a Facebook group by the name H4 and H1B immigrants, mm -hmm. okay, in the United States of America. Of That's course. awesome. There are 71,000 members in the group. She is very vocal about the uh, advocacy. Uh, about the green card backlog has been supporting. Okay, so I have to be group. her friend then, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> no, that's fine, <laughs> but honestly speaking, Netra, Netra has played a very important role there. Yeah. And Netra has a question right now. Okay. So Netra, please shoot your question right away. Yeah, I don't have any question as such, but uh, since there is a walk for equality in Illinois right now, and uh, all over the country, everybody cannot uh, uh, visit that place mm -hmm. so i request everyone whoever is listening and spread the awareness yes. that there is a walk but at the same time on the same day if everybody can send the flowers bouquets a postcard to support s386 to dick durbin senator dick durbin that will be highly mm -hmm. appreciated so. so that unanimously and with uniformity at the same time the entire country's legal immigrants can show the support to the walk thank you so much netra i'm getting another call thank you so much for your inputs yes sure. everybody is he hearing you. us live right now i have another caller from michigan again so i'm putting you on hold right now so, hi may i know your name please yes madam my name is ravi hi ravi I'm a, hi i'm a farmer in south georgia uh, i just want to ask you one question madam you are a farmer in south georgia that Perfect. is great yes. oh, great i used to work as an engineer but i started farming for 20 years mm -hmm. And I have a problem with the Mexicans. They don't pay the social security, and it's hard work for them. I like to get info, you know, getting from labor from India, and what legal, you know, I have to take care of it. Ravi ji, uh, your question is actually a little off the hook right now, and you want to bring farmers from India. I understand. I think we'll have to do a different session on that. That's an H two A visa. Okay, so <laughs> Nandini says it is a H two A visa. I believe we'll have to come back on that, and that topic actually sounds interesting to me. Thanks for bringing this light while we are discussing high skill immigrants right now. That so was interesting <laughs> topic. Yes, it is indeed. I mean, H two A visa. I never knew about yes, it. Yes, agriculture I mean, I, visa. I have to speak about. Uh, different visas to okay. you. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I would like to, you know, uh, discuss about O-1 oh, visa, yes. which is a, you know, which is a special mm -hmm. visa, you know, for extraordinary ability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ability. I want to discuss about different uh, categories, EB-1, 2, 3, yeah. and, uh, you know, when there is a second possibility what I want to explore from you for my audiences, people who are extraordinarily good here mm -hmm. on EB-2, EB-3 visas. Mm -hmm. 
is there a prospect that they can port their EB2, EB3 dates without leaving the country mm -hmm. in this outstanding category somewhere right. and come up to EB1? Right. I mean, I'm not definitely asking any question from you right now. This is be going to be my next series, you know, when I'll have Nandini here. Wide range of questions about these kind of possibilities, co possibilities where people join direct clients while they are on the green car wait and how safe it is because uh, possibilities because what's happening is with one multiple layers coming into the picture into the job scenario they're losing out on their uh, things you know and to you know carry the conversation further Nandini yes. I received a message of a, you know question okay. I'm gonna read it out right now okay. the question came from Karthik uh, oh. Karthik Nayak he's based out of Florida and he's again in the green card backlog mm -hmm. and he speaks about he says for decades the government has cut the number of immigrants far below what Congress authorized. Since 1990, after Bush Sr., every administration has misinterpreted the law, counting the spouses and children of mm -hmm. legal immigrants against the limits on immigration when the statute lacks the requirement. This has cut the available slots for high-skilled workers in half, mm -hmm. creating endless delays as they wait to obtain permanent residency in the United States. On H1, they don't count dependents separately in 85k. Right. So why Ela can't take to the courts? I mean, Ela, of course, your role or whatever. Let me know. Well, I am a member of Ela. Um, I'm not going to say that um, I haven't been disappointed um, many a times with what Ela has done over the years. I do feel that they can take a stronger stand in many of the legal um, immigration bills that are in in play or whether there is advocacy. Um, there are a lot of chatter and a lot of discord between members in AILA who feel that AILA is not taking an active stand, is not doing enough to for legal immigrants, that their focus really is more about the undocumented workers, which I don't have a problem with, there, that there's also a role for that. But we also have a role, right, legal immigration. Um, can they sue? Um, I think the limitation, there are limitations on their ability to sue. They have to find a very clear avenue in the law that feel that they feel um, that they can sue upon. If they don't find a clear avenue, they're not going to take that road up. And the other part is that there, there's a limit to what they can do. Um, ELA is not the only advocacy group that needs to be out there, there has to be just the general public also mm -hmm. has to be invested in reforming immigration. Um, and that's a thing that I think that as immigrants and the Indian community definitely needs to get involved more okay. in. And so I appreciate what you do and what um, some of the other people that I know are doing to highlight, inform the public about what is going on today. Perfect. Thank you so much, Nandini. In fact, it had been a very, very, uh, you know, informative session all together today mm -hmm. with a lot of wide range of questions were asked. The last question that I want to put in is about lobbying. Okay. Just for the general public to understand this lobbying structure, mm -hmm. how the H-1B or the visa holder community can mm -hmm. be part of these lobbying efforts. I mean, is it legitimate for people on visa? Yeah. To fund for lobbyists, mm -hmm. if at all it is possible, mm -hmm. can they hire a lobbyist? They can if they have millions of dollars. Okay, sure. No, I mean, see, yes. millions of dollars in the sense, see, a person is on a visa here. Yes. I really don't know. I mean, but as a, as it, a it doesn't work that way. It's it's not an individual. Um, you can't hire a, a firm, a lobby group in Washington D.C. There's hundreds of lobby groups. Mm -hmm. But you as an individual, of course, if you have the funds to do that, absolutely you can go do that. But uh, it's very, that's not for the common man. That's impossible. No, the point is it would you be know? a crowdfunding. Yes. Okay. So how it would work is, of course, uh, people are on a H-1B visa, yes. H-4 visa, whatever. There are people who can always come up and do a crowdfunding. Can they hire a lobbyist? Sure. What, yes, absolutely. A lobbyist is an advocate for your specific position, but they're a paid advocate. And that is my some of my issues with the lobby groups, right? Because they don't necessarily believe in what you want them to do. They will do what you want them to do as long as you pay them. But are they effective? Absolutely. So ab yeah, if I. that's something that to do, go ahead. So the thing, the legitimacy, you being a lawyer, I'm asking mm -hmm. you particularly, because there is a concern when uh, the immigrant community, these visa holders, you mm -hmm. know, say, hey, uh, 
I cannot fund a lobbyist. Mm -hmm. If I do that, it is illegitimate. I cannot pay a lobbying firm. Where did they hear something like that? Uh, you told, no, if there's a crowdfunding, here. if they want to be part of an organization that is going to hire a lobbying group, if they want to um, put some money towards, they're not working. So, and if somebody's on a non-immigrant visa, the issue for them is, are they working outside of the scope of that petition? No. If, so they're not. No, they're just giving not. money. Just giving money. Money. It's a political contribution. Simple it, it as is, that. Okay, so there's, oh, there's a difference. You cannot pay. Uh, you cannot pay to the events of the senators and the congressmen. Right. Right? If you are not a citizen of the country, of the United States, but to the lobbyists, you can pay. You can pay. If, 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 a, they, if the, they need, the if there's somebody, let's say there's an organization. Let's say right. a nonprofit organization is, we are looking to um, get funds to hire a lobbying company. And right. you want to contribute to that campaign, right. there is nothing in immigration that stops you from contributing a hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, thousand dollars. My to next that. question in line, can a person on a H-1B visa mm. or a H-4 EAD yes. open a non-profit? No, the H-1B cannot. The H-4 H4 EAD, EAD can. Can open? Yes. Or the L-2 EAD? Yeah, L-2 EAD. It's open or employment. Or the EAD? OPT EAD, no. Okay. OP so you're yeah. saying, you're saying, mm -hmm. uh, H4 EAD can open a business civilly. Yes. Can also open a non-profit. Absolutely. 501 C3. 501 C3 or C4? C3. Uh, well, they can open both. They can open actually both. They, what is the difference between 501 C3 and 4? Three? 3 is the non-profit part. There is tax limitations on a 3 and a 4. I c cannot I mean, give this you... This would be for this cause, of course. Yes. So yeah. least it would be outside office. of the scope of it's this not call, but yes. At all, but what right. I'm saying is, a person who has an employment authorization document, an EAD, that is tied to open employment, like an L2 or a right. H4 EAD, can go and open an organization, whether it's for-profit or non-profit, mm -hmm. and do whatever they want to do. Can a, a F1 OPT do that? No, no, because that has to be tied to their... OPT for an F1 is Employer. based on okay. training, right? right They're right, getting right. training. Right. So it, you cannot do it that way. But H4 EADs, L2 EADs, absolutely. Go ahead and do that. Promote advocacy in this field. Perfect. So directly to my audience now with Nandini's inputs. Of course, there is a lot of knowledge we still need to you know, take out from different people, knowledgeable people, people like Nandini Nair and many other people you know, who do advocacy. Uh, till date, Many advocacy groups have been into picture. They have been pitching in their efforts. They are going almost in the right direction, but of course, there is a strength, there is a might that is lacking somewhere or other. And of course, with the um, one advocacy uh, group, you know, breaking uh, into the picture in the sense, um, their lobbyist has moved out. Apparently, looks like that's a hearsay right now. And uh, people were banking upon that group as mm. well. I mean, they were the main people uh, who were going behind my clean and speaking mm. about the unanimous mm -hmm. consent route and getting yes. it done. And now they have come up in open offensive, very, very offensive against Senator Rick Darwin. And there are abusive languages being used, which is demeaning the stature of the Indians in general. So please don't do it. Do not abuse. Do not use wrong words against Senator Rick Darwin. Whatever has happened has happened. Of course, there is a thing we feel bad about it, but using a full language, offensive, is the worst thing you could do to the advocacy efforts that are happening right now. You have come a long way. We appreciate your efforts. You have really done a tremendous, great, great work right now towards the high skill immigrants. Hold back your patience level and anger, you know, because that's going to help us right now. Just don't be on offensive. All those members who are part of that group, it's a very live, a straight message to you. I am also part of the team in the same efforts and we have to join hands together to reach towards our goal. If we have to reach out to Senator Dick Durbin's office through our calls, through our emails, through our town halls mm -hmm. or a walk, walk for equality that is coming up on October 10th, please join in, pitch in, no full language, no root talk and go with the statistics, go with the facts, do not cry, say the words that are supposed to be spoken in terms of the facts that we can provide to substantiate where the immigrant community is in picture and is able to contribute to the success of the country. H-1B distortion of facts, lies, everything should be brought to picture, how they are used or misused also admit 
and do not admit whatever is not si uh, correct. That is my personal advice. I am sitting from this platform, I am conveying this message because this is the time for all of you to wake up, take a step ahead, go into the right direction. If we crack this block this time, Senator Durbin's objection goes in the right direction, if he just li lifts the ban, you know, the block, we are at the right step and very soon we can see the success for S386. But if it does not happen, then be prepared to be loud in your efforts. Do not do piggyback riding. Do not believe that only one organization was there to save you or a nonprofit was there to save you. That only would do it or not do it because you are the makers or breakers of your own fate. Stand up, take a stand, leave your home if you have to for a few days to do the right advocacy. Leave your comfort zone if you have to do it to do the right thing that is required at this moment. Nandini Nair has already spoken about the same thing. Take your step. Go out of the com your you know comfort zone and call, 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 call Senator Dick Durbin's office. One is one. And of course, reach out to Senator Mike Lee again and again. Of course, thank him for the great efforts. Senator Kamala Harris also. They are the people who are speaking for you. You need to thank them. Do not cross the boundaries of respect though. Keep the respect intact. That's the way you can make it. You can really be successful in this effort and do not forget the date October 10th walk for equality conducted in Illinois if you are there do join if you want to join in more numbers please join I am from this platform of TV5 and Mana TV I am giving you this open invitation to please join in the walk for equality speak about the green card backlog provide the numbers one second date please keep in mind would be November 26th the week of the Thanksgiving in the United States November 26 happens to be a Tuesday and of course after that Thursday November 28th is the Thanksgiving and the Black Friday on 29th the date chosen is November 26 for a simple reason this is the week where people are obliging they are being thankful to people and we want to convey our message of being thankful to the lawmakers makers in this country if they take the right right step so that would be GC equality day participate in that as well by stepping out of your offices for half an hour, 12 p.m. to 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Central Time, and Pacific Time, respectively. Walk out in numbers and sh stay together and stage of, you know, presentation in a way where you are able to educate your peers and co-workers at the workspace. This is a message to be given loud and clear to everybody. This is the way you can make a change. Social media has the power to change the decision maker's mind. This is where you have to go. Substantiate everything with the right number. Do not take the wrong blame. That's what I can say. And now, Nandini, closure is on you for this show. Thank you so much for coming to our, you know, uh, studios and educating the, you know, audience. Mm. And of course, I'm looking forward to many other sessions with you yes. on different visa issues and everything. Yes. That is where we would be talking about H-1B extensions, mm -hmm. H-4EADs, yes. about the EB-5 visas yes. as well, or yes. O visas as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. so that we educate everybody. So, Nandini, your final stake final take on the entire conversation today and the future of S386, please. Well, first of all, thank you everybody for ch calling in, joining, watching, and Jotsna, it was such a pleasure. Thank, thank you, you so much for having me here. Um, all I can say is that, you know, I live in with hope. I live with the immigrants. I live for your life, and I really, truly am on your side, and I understand all the jour your journey. So please reach out to me whenever you have a chance if you have any further questions on anything in related to immigration. I am a partner in this journey of yours. Thank you so much, Nandini. Thank you. Thank you so much, my dear friends. All the best. Keep your efforts on. Time is not to sleep, not to rest. Time is to act, act and act. And you know what you have to do now. Wishing you luck. Stay blessed. God bless. Thank you.